Hi, my name is Cathy Bowe. I'm from Charles Darwin University and the ANU, and I'm presenting on behalf of my colleagues Jill Nunmira, Serene Namunja, and Jeanette Buranali about recognising and building relationships through teaching and learning an Indigenous Australian language. And we're proud to be coming to you today from Larrakia Country in Darwin in Northern Territory of Australia, and we acknowledge the Larrakia Elders past, present and emerging. Language, Sartagre. I am Albadi. I am took me a watch for a bidding good walk. Hello, my young, you are Serene Namunja. My name is Serene Namunja. I am Dolkang Kunbalanya Bay. I came from Aunt Pelly. I work the Kunwinju. My language is Kunwinju. I did it in my body, one year on the Kunwalker. I'm a man of being Kunwalk at Bay. Kunwalk at Bay Manguga. I didn't me. I went to Kan Wood at Pere Jamak Pribu Pere Puga Pribolt me Kunwak at Pere Kunwak at Pere Maka Manku again, Minari Palatma Manari Purbun at Tapara Pork. Or if you are a young man, why would you be preparing my young man at Pere? Me, Cabri Purbun Pugale Cabri Puri, Mabra Cabri Walk, the good walk, my pong at Pere. Prior to colonization, Australia had somewhere between two hundred and fifty and seven hundred different languages and dialects. Today there are only around 120 languages that are spoken in a variety of different ecologies. Only a handful, about 12, are still spoken across all generations. And these are the languages with more than 1,000 self-reported speakers. So it's quite a distinct map from the previous one. The many of the other languages that are not included on the second map are being reclaimed from documentary sources. This map also doesn't include contact languages like Creole and Yumplatok, which are the fastest growing indigenous languages in Australia. But we're talking about Biningumok, which is the name of a family of seven mutually intelligible dialects spoken by around 2,000 speakers across West Arnhem Land in the Northern Territory. The largest language is Gunwingu, which is counted as one of the 12 strong indigenous languages in that it's still spoken across all generations, but still endangered. The West Arnhem Land region in which these languages are spoken is of significant archaeological, anthropological, environmental, ecological and historical significance. It includes the World Heritage listed Kakadu National Park, as well as a large uranium mine, some of the world's oldest rock art, which inspires much contemporary art as an active part of the community life and economy. And though the area is of interest to non-Indigenous people, the role of language in maintaining the connections of people and places is largely unrecognised by outsiders working in this space. The Biningomok Language Centre is based in Gunbalanya, 300 kilometres east of Darwin, and they're developing activities and resources to support language maintenance for local speakers, as well as by creating resources about the natural environment, literacy materials, colouring books with language and cultural information, word puzzles shared on social media and in the local newspaper, and short videos sharing about cultural and environmental information. My name is Mary Manu Gunwalk, Korean Language Center. I got a man who worked. Korean Language Center. I got a man who worked. Korean Language Center. I went to Jigarman, I would 
que a preocupela era. Para que o capri, capri por bom dia, abri o porto me. Já capri o octi. Mas não... Quando o octi não pede, mas não é que eu quero dizer. Quando eu não me engano, pede com o octi. Emmanuel, language for us Aboriginal people, like language is our mother tongue language. So it's very important for being people to learn to learn our kids and also non-indigenous people. So kids can have future like on yeah. mm. The language center also supports sharing language and culture with outsiders. So working together with academic researchers, we developed an online course to introduce the language and culture of the region to non-indigenous people, including visiting and local professionals and interested students from around Australia. Biningwamok is one of the better resourced languages in Australia. It has a two volume grammar range of learning materials, resources for local professionals such as health workers, videos of traditional stories and stories of local interest. There's work on a dictionary of which a portion is available online and is being prepared for print. There's a seasonal calendar incorporating a lot of environmental and cultural knowledge, videos and other materials produced for health literacy. We also created a, quite a few new resources for the course using very simple technologies of digital cameras and free software. We had videos of local bidding introducing themselves or discussing particular issues. We made videos about skin and kin connections. There was a set of resources created in an era of bilingual education a few decades ago and these were recorded and made into videos for reading practice within the course. Like in most Aboriginal communities, Kinship connections are fundamental to Binin life. Everything in the Binin world is divided into two moieties, Dua and Yiritja, which includes people, places and everything in the natural environment. The moieties split further into four subsections known as skins, or skin, which are given skin names, and there's a set of eight names. So for example, Jill is Ngalwagaj, as she introduced herself earlier. Her granddaughter, Serene, is Ngalgangila, So that's two generations apart, but the same matrimoiety. Ngalkangila has two marriage choices. She can either marry a Nangarij or a Nabulan. That's a right way marriage. And either way, their children will be Nagojok or Ngagojok. So each of the eight names has a masculine and a feminine form. So for the introductory online course, we focused a lot on skin and kin relationships to give learners a way to enter into conversations with Binin. A large portion of the course was devoted to explaining the systems, the appropriate names to call people, and how to interact respectfully. We also spent time exploring the rights and responsibilities of various kin connections, including avoidance relationships. In the next video, Jill and Serene explain some of these connections and naming practices. Now. Nagon Gumo, Malangare Nagon Gumo, Walaula, Capimone, Mangapa Nunga, Capimone, Magolon Algon Gumo, Dalo, Capimone, Pelo Alan, Capimone, Magolon Cabin, I Cabin, Mane, Nau. Pening nu ye, na pening gobeng nu ye ngal bajan, jana bajan, ngal yang kapan mana ime nagur, ay ngal gur, jana nagur, nau na ping balak ngal yang ada ngal daluk, ming kapan e walk di, giving learners a skin name gives them the right to enter the Binin life world as legitimate peripheral participants. 
Once they have a skin name, they're immediately interconnected in bin in relationships. They become kin to all bin in, and by extension to all Balandu who have skin names. This creates a connection between the learners and the bin in authorities, with the effect of decreasing the sense of distance that online teaching can create. We created a set of activities where learners had to identify their connections to other learners through the skin and kinship system and then to members of the Language Centre Committee. So building language activities into the cultural concepts that were being explored. So drawing on Indigenous pedagogies, the course focuses on identity and relationships using concepts of local significance, such as the use of skin names, to connect people into the relational system and kinship structures to explore relationships and responsibilities, to invite learners into the life world of binning people. Binning were also able to engage with technologies to develop new materials for the course and to engage with learners via video conferencing. In the next videos, Serene talks about her experience with this, then Jill and Jeanette talk about connecting with students online. For myself, it's a bit hard because I'm just learning to. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, learning. I'm being able, but you know, um, Learning about how to read, pronounce. So that's what it's been hard for me. Mm -hmm. But I'm getting there. Did you like it when we made videos with you and Gaga just talking without reading? Yes. Because I got my grandmother with me, so it's <laughs> easy. Yeah. Well, they can learn from online. And also we can talk to them in computer. Mm -hmm just to say hello, you know, so they can recognize people who work in language center. And we can hear what they're, what they're saying when they pronounce the word, and we can help them to make it, you know, right way to pronounce. Because it's a difficult language yeah, for them yeah, to learn yeah. your pronunciation and grammar. Mm -hmm. It's easy to help them. Help them. And like when they do the, um, they speak in a, damn it, they speak in the um, computers. Mm -hmm. And that's good too when they are away, like not from us. The online nature of the course predates the coronavirus pandemic. We were already exploring how the place-based nature of language could be shared online. And our course actually hasn't changed much within the past year with COVID, except that it has made it more accessible to people who were not able to visit communities when they normally would have during the dry season, for example. The affordances of the technology are only one part of the story. The course actually invites learners to connect with bidding people which involves recognising the relationship between people, language and land. Increasing the visibility and value of these languages also contributes to local language vitality. Here we're also considering how the creation of such a course can build relationships between a speech community and the university in bringing Indigenous languages and culture into academia and making it more visible and accessible. Thank you for watching our presentation. We would be interested in answering any questions or engaging in further discussion with you. Bobo.